All right. So, uh, welcome everyone uh, to the workshop. So, I think uh, today we will continue on the mock presentation, the teaching. And uh, today we will be having three people that will be presenting. Yes, we can. Thank you. That will Thanks. be presenting uh, today. Dr. Tweedy, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, maybe uh, just by uh, indicating by saying yes, I am uh, for the three people. It's uh, Patricia Mekuru in the house. She um, is. She looks like she's still connecting her audio. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I see Dr. Neka Onuma. Yes, I'm here. All right, cool. And is Miss Juliet Inyang in the house? I'm reaching out to her now. All right. So anyway, um, since you are the first to respond, Dr. Neka, then yeah. I will give the floor to you. I hope, I don't know if you understand how we do this or should I go through what you, you kind of expect to do? Why don't you just go give us an overview quickly, yeah. So normally what we do is, uh, so the mock teaching is all about asking um, alumni to you know, tell us a little bit about their course, um, you know, in, I say 15 minutes, but you, basically you have 10 minutes because then the five minutes, it's more for discussion. And then we have a bit of time to go into the next person. So every course has a, a four modules, a number of modules. So just pick any module or pick any way you want to present. And in a very short time, interact with us as your students so that we can see whether we understand what's going on. But it's also a forum for all of us to learn uh, so we can teach each other and uh, learn from each other. And that's the whole idea. So as interactive as possible, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, you tell us how you want to run the show. Okay? Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So, um, it's good morning here in the in the Midwest of the U.S. Good morning to everyone. It's an honor to be here and to be a part of the Osiri University community. Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, the name of the course that I'm going to be teaching is Restoring My Arts and Gender Equality in Africa. Um, the idea behind this is we are going to look at the issue of gen gender equality issues gender equality challenges, and we're going to use the lens of Mayat, the philosophy of Mayat. For those of you that attended the Ubuntu Dialogue, I did uh, give a, a brief uh, overview of what that is exactly. Um, so Mayat is this philosophy or this concept um, that's from ancient Egypt. Mayat is an uh, ancient Egyptian go um, goddess. Um, that is um, now a concept or philosophy that focuses on seven main principles. And those are truth, balance, order, harmony, righteousness, morality, and justice. Um, so in this course, we're going to um, use those lenses or that lens to um, have a discussion on the issues that we're having on the continents and um, in the diaspora regarding um, gender equality. So I'm going to talk about uh, module three. Week three, uh, the module is ethics. Um, the proverb is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. This is an African proverb. And uh, for those of you who are experts on proverb, maybe you can share the, the specific origin, but I'm unsure of the actual origin of that uh, proverb. Um, I would like to start the module with uh, a question, um, and that question is, using the concept of maths, what is, uh, and I just found an error, that's great, this is good, because at least now I'm finding notes on what I need to adjust, and hopefully I'm also going to get feedback on adjustments I can make 
to hopefully um, make this a more uh, beneficial and fruitful course. Um, but the question I'm going to ask um, is, what is or can you propose a practical way to address the ethical components of gender inequality? Um, I don't know if anyone is able to answer that question based off of the little information I've given. Um, but that's the question I'm hoping that my students will be able to at least answer by the end of the, um, the module. Um, so in this module, we're going to explore the ethics of gender equality, um, inequality, and relate it back to the concepts of Mayat. So I'm going to have a live discussion uh, with the students. Um, it's going to be a one hour um, live session, and I'm hoping to um, have a, a conversation with my students about um, the qu question that I just asked, which again, I'm going to repeat is, um, can you propose a practical way to address the ethical components of gender um, inequality? And I'm hoping that the key takeaway from this module for my students is that they understand the ethics of gender equality um, from, an, from an African point of view. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to evaluate um, uh, our position um, or evaluate how to position our call um, for gender equality as a charge for uh, preserving Africa, the African society as a society uh, with strong ethical conviction. Um, I have an assignment um, for this module and for all modules, but for this particular module, the assignment is to read the case of the 1929 Aba women's riots in Eastern Nigeria. Um, and I have a link um, that my students will click on and read an article about this uh, riots. Um, those of you who are from Nigeria or who are well versed in um, Nigerian um, history or Nigerian issues, um, I don't know if you're aware of this particular riot. It was one when I was learning about it, uh, struck me as uh, differently as an Igbo woman myself. Um, but pretty much this really ties into the protests that we're seeing now, not only in Nigeria, but across the world, across of Africa. Um, but pretty much women stood up and spoke up about the, um, the injustices that uh, at the time um, was going on in, in Biafra. Um, so um, I'm hoping that after reading this article, my students will be able to have a very fruitful conversation, a very um, engaging conversation in the live discussion that I'm going to be having with them. Um, I also have additional assignments, additional readings. Um, I have uh, uh, um, uh, uh, chapter assignments, and then I'm also going to have a quiz um, that I will um, have for my students to take in regards to their own understanding on, um, you know, not only the case study, but also their own understanding on ethics and how it um, um, deals with uh, uh, gender equality in Africa. So that's really the gist of it. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions or if anyone would like to take a shot at answering that question, um, which I asked earlier, which again I repeat is what practical, um, uh, way can we address the ethical components of gender equality or I should gender inequality? Thank you. Okay, so if anyone has questions or feedback, please uh, you can do so. I think you're muted, sir. Yes, okay. sorry about that. Um, just want to make sure that uh, that the format of this is is for the Malamai to teach us. So, so, so at least for the for the next two that that, that are gonna go, uh, Doctor Eze, please correct me if I'm wrong. I think they are going to 
pretend that we are students and they would teach us for five, 10 minutes, yeah. right? And then if they have questions, they can ask questions and then we answer them as their students or yeah. respond as their students, yeah. right? Um, so I think, I think I just want to uh, point that out there. So let me be a good student and answer the question that the Malama, the Malama just asked. Um, how can we, um, so, so teacher, you, 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 I believe your question is, how can uh, my art help in, uh, to resolve gender inequality issues in Africa? And um, I have to say that I attended your Ubuntu dialogue. It was a very powerful session. I enjoyed it. So I'm going to plagiarize from your, from your dialogue because you gave us the answer in that dialogue. And, um, and I would say that the answer would be for our government to infuse into our curriculum the idea of self-mastery. Um, I think it was a very powerful question, the powerful answer that you pro provided to that issue of equal, gender equality or any issue as a, as a whole. I think it all begins with self-mastery. If we can understand who we are and understand our own values, our own truths, then it becomes easier to have open dialogues. It becomes easier for us to be able to recognize a woman as being equal to a man. Um, so I think it, be, it, be, it begins there. And in fact, as we, be, as we dig deeper into our own history and understand who we are, we realize that we are all Africans the world began, humanity began in Africa, and that we are, as Africans, are protectors of humanity. So these values are something we need to espouse. So yes, so, so to solve that problem, we need to infuse into our curriculum um, this art of self-mastery. We need to spend time thinking about who we are, thinking about our history, thinking about our family. I think it will go a long way in helping resolve issues that relates to gender inequality. So that'll be my, my, my answer. I hope I, I get an A. <laughs> yes, 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 definitely. <laughs> um, thank you. Was there any other additions or any yeah, other? Um... Uh, I was looking for uh, the book, and I know it's around here somewhere in my library. But I, the the book I told you about in the uh, session, the last session, my the moral idea uh, by Dr. Uh, Malana Karenga. I was just trying to find it so I can give you um, uh, a picture of the cover. Um, but in that, uh, the question I would pose um, is that my art is um, not meant to be a particular uh, religion, mm -hmm. um, but with the world being uh, kind of a tribalistic uh, religion, based uh, society that it is at this point, how would we infuse Maya into our world without bringing along all the, the trappings that come with religion? And uh, mm -hmm. by trappings, you know, um, how, how we kind of make religions our tribe and that if you're, if you're for our tribe, then great. If you're not, then you must die type of thing. So how can we create this myotic world without falling into the same trappings as our present uh, religions, you know, put us in? Yeah. Um, I, again, that's a loaded question. That's a, yeah. you know, it's a, so, the heavy so one, a lot, but I, you know, that, that, a lot of a lot of what needs to take one, place one is thoughts. a lot of what needs to take place is a shift in mindsets, a change in the way that we think. Um, this is something that ha will happen over time. It's not gonna happen overnight, right? So that's why we have conversations such as what we're having now. Um, so when we're thinking about Mayat, um, truth and balance is one of the seven components, right? So um, in this module, one of the highlights I'm gonna highlight with my students is this about women's riots. What, what um, if we see gender inequality as what it is, truthfully, it's an ethical problem. Um, and we make the choice to pursue truth 
right? That that should be our only goal is to live our true live our true lives and pursue truth. Then we will know that um, the impl- the things that we implement. Uh, uh, um, Sorry, I, I apologize. I lost my third train of thought. Okay, so if we're if we're if we're choosing to live truthfully, and we want to have balanced lives, we have to recognize certain things, such as gender equality is an ethical issue. So we must address that. Um, we must address it because it goes against my art, right? So anything, Dr. Easterling, anything that goes against my art. We need to make sure we address it. Um, it says, I can't hear the speaker too. I don't know if, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Can hear oh, you. Okay, okay. Maybe it's just some other, some other um, IT issues. But um, if we change the way we think, if we change our mindsets um, and choose to restore this concept, this philosophy of Mayats to what it really is, that means we are choosing to live our true lives. We are choosing to recognize the truth of the issues that we have, the truth of the challenges that we're having on the continent. One of those, those challenges being gender equality. We need to recognize that it's an ethical problem and that we need to address it as a society that chooses to have balance um, anything that presents as an ethical issue must be addressed. Um, so again, that's uh, uh, the conversations I'm hoping to have with my students about um, 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 what it means to implement, what it means to restore um, this way of thinking that you know once was. When we go back to history, this how this is how it used to be back long ago. So. Thank you. All right. I think because of time, I think uh, we know that the time is not that much. It's, uh, it's supposed to be a cost that takes at least an hour or so. But um, thank you, uh, Dr. Onuma. And also thank you, other people, for being able to pose some questions. Um, so I will move to uh, Mrs. Emekuru uh, Immaculate. So if you're ready, I will leave the floor so you can uh, uh, teach us uh, your course and what you have. Uh, you can un- unmute yourself. Uh, okay. All right. Could you find the unmute button or is still the same problem? All right. Um, Maybe what we can do is we will give you the time to figure that out, but I will just move over to Juliet. Then Juliet can continue because of the short time we have. So uh, Juliet, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Okay, good evening, everybody. Yeah, good evening from Nigeria. I don't know where you're joining in from, but you're welcome to this course. So I'll just um, share my screen right now. Good evening to you too, teacher. (laughs) Okay, I hope you can see my screen. You're coming up? Uh, Yeah. Oh, great. All right, that's fine. Um, All right, so you're welcome to the course, Principles of Marketing. And my name is Juliet. I am the Malama that will be handling this course for today. Uh, You're welcome to Osiri University once again. So, like I said, my name is Juliet, and I have a BSc in Marketing, MSc in Marketing, PhD Marketing in View. So you can call me a certified marketer, an educator, a researcher, a data analyst, and a social entrepreneur. So you should look forward to having um, <laughs> a blend of everything in the course of this lecture. Uh, so that's enough about me. Let's meet you. Um, but this is how we're going to do it. We are going to have a little breakout session that's going to just last for 
max two minutes. Uh, what you'll be doing in the breakout session is that you get to meet a classmate and then try to discuss this proverb. The proverb is from um, Burundi. It says, where there is law, there is no darkness. So we'll just have a brief breakout session right now. And um, when we come back, I would like to hear what you have to say. And I hope you learned something interesting from a new classmate. Let's um, have a breakout session. And Juliet, how many people do you want per room? Okay, we can, we have about how many? 24 people? participants currently. Okay, 24, yeah. So we can have about three. Let's just have three breakouts. Okay. So see you when you're back from the breakout. Okay, so the breakout. Yeah, I, I won't want to join the breakout. Yeah, any other person can join. Uh, so Jen, let them um, let them write this. We can put this in the breakout as an announcement, like just so that they can. Mm -hmm. copy this. Yeah, let me copy what you'll be discussing in the breakout so that you give it to them. You just paste it there. I'm pasting it in the chat right now. Okay. My chat is not coming up. <laughs> Chats. Awesome. You could send it to me privately, I guess, or some, or if you can't do it to everybody. Oh, yeah. I think I should be able to do that. It's not still coming up. Let's open it. Can you see the chat? Sorry. No, I didn't get anything. No, I can't even see the chat. Yeah. Oh, send it to me in a text message then. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, okay. I see it now. Okay. So this is what, yeah. So it's here in the chat. Oh, I sent it to Siri privately. Sorry. No, that's fine. I got it. Oh, great. Okay. So just put it in the chat room. Let them know. And it's just for two minutes so that we can have time to click on the lecture. So once it's two minutes, just end the breakout. You can notify them. Okay. Right, thank you. <laughs> so the poll is ready, right? <laughs> yeah, the poll is ready. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna close. They can hear. I think they can hear us. Can they hear us? Oh. No, no. When you're in breakout, you can't hear people who are not in breakout. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's 11:30. I'm gonna close it now. Okay, yeah, so you just will give them a warning. Anyway, it should give them 30 seconds warning anyway. Break out in 30 seconds. Please wrap up, please wrap up. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, so if you end break out, it's gonna count down 30 seconds. Oh, no, it counts down on one minute, <laughs> not, uh, not 30 seconds. <laughs> no problem. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> okay, I never use this. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. All right. Break out over? Uh, 36 seconds. <laughs> it started from one minute, not 30. 30. <laughs> no problem, that's fine. <laughs> So, so, 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> wow, seconds are really long. <laughs> Once it's over, it's gonna just yep. end by. Okay. All right, five seconds. Okay. okay. Okay, done. 
Okay, so welcome back everybody. I hope you enjoyed the breakout session. I hope you got to meet a new classmate. So who wants to volunteer? We just have about one minute to do that. Who wants to volunteer? Who did you meet? And um, do you want to say something about the proverb you discussed? Where there is love, there is no darkness. I just want to say something briefly. I'd like to hear from about two people, two volunteers. Yes, I want to say something briefly. Good evening, everyone. Oh, great, Nina. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. I was in break room 3M2. I met lovely sets of persons there. I met uh, Mr. Akubike from Nigeria, Stella from Uganda. Um, I don't know how I can pronounce his name, but he's from Toronto. And I <laughs> met Emil from Nigeria as well and myself. We want other person, but because of time, we couldn't start introduce ourselves properly. So you have in, a um, time to do that in the discussion forum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in um, in in dissecting what the proverb means, collectively it means where there is light, everything is achievable because there's no way you can marry darkness with light and light with lightness. It is practically impossible. So when there is light, you can see and have the ability to achieve something. That's it from my, from my room. Wow, I love your perspective, Nina. Thank you for volunteering and giving us such thoughtful feedback. Any other person want to volunteer? Can I vo volunteer? My classmate, Olushola, he was saying something um, when we got hoarded back into this uh, bigger hall. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so Olushala, do you want to continue? Do you want to say who you met? Did you meet someone new, someone interesting? And what do you want to say about this proverb? Where there is love, there is no darkness. Olushala, uh, you, you are mute. Okay. Olushala, you are mute. Oh. Okay. Mute. Uh -huh. Oh, great. I can hear you right yeah. now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Definitely. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me yes. now? Yes. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon again, everybody. My name is Olushola. But unfortunately, I cannot really recall those people I met, but I know that I met uh, Professor Kalu. I met Nosu. Then mm -hmm. I met two other people, although I joined later. Uh, in our group, the, the, the summary of it is that darkness is negative. Darkness is something that uh, we don't cherish. Now, if there is love, love brings life, bring light. And where there's love, there's cooperation, there's unity. And when you are together, you can achieve more because of the synergy. So where there's love, we come together, we cooperate and achieve more mm -hmm. together than, being, uh, than pursuing objective individually. Yeah, so great. definitely, where there's love, it will drive off darkness, bring light, and we achieve more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olushala. So that's the much we can take from our breakout session, but I'm very sure we all enjoyed it. Um, keywords I was able to pick out from, um, the, from the volunteers, love, cooperation, unity, um, peace. Yeah, those were key words I was able to pick out from there. So these are the words I would like us to, to, I would like to characterize the course of our interaction throughout the course of this study or throughout the, the whole course. Yeah, throughout the learning process. Let's try to show some love, show some respect to your classmates, respect everyone's opinion, um, be cooperative because you may be having some some assessments where you have to do group works. So you need to show that cooperation. Let this proverb always be at the back of our mindset that where there is love, there is no darkness. So I'm sure we'll be having some love in this class. All right, so without wasting much time, let's talk about the course, Principles of Marketing. So for this course, the overall objective is um, to clear the misconception of marketing and equip you, the learners, with the necessary knowledge and skills that you need up to the point that you are confidently able to prepare a sellable marketing plan. Yeah, a marketing plan is something you will need for your own individual business. You will need the marketing plan if you find yourself in a managerial position where you're expected to prefer some managerial strategies or, or 
um, maybe some campaign or anything for the organization, if you're expected to sell your organization or sell yourself or sell any brand, then you, you may need to present a marketing plan. And what's the point of presenting a marketing plan if it's not going to appeal to investors, right? So that is something you may also want to achieve from this course. So what are some of the learning outcomes? I'll just go over, it to, uh, go over a few of them. You can find more information on the course at, on Lendash. So when you log into your student account on Lendash, you should be able to see more about the course. So but here are a few of them. Um, the learning outcome, you're expected to understand the principles of marketing within the African context. You're going to understand that the focus of marketing has always been on the consumer. And then you will understand the various marketing processes and um, get to examine various marketing decisions for sustainable businesses. And lastly, this is the most exciting part of it. I'm really looking forward to this part where you have to prepare a marketing plan and present it at a business pitch which is called Lions Ra, yeah, at the Syria University. But trust me, that's not to, to, to keep you on the edge. It's actually optional, yeah. But it's something I really hope you take advantage of, yeah. Some investment would not hurt, right? <laughs> okay, so we're just going to do a quick poll. I just want to see what you know about marketing already. So we'll have a quick poll right now. Um, the first question, Jen, please, can we have the poll? Um, so please feel free. Professor, yeah. can you press the poll button on your end? It's done. Okay, great. So this is a poll. Um, we we'll just have a few seconds to answer to this. I just want to see what you think of marketing. Now, let's just know your background so that we know how to communicate this course further. So do you think, first question, is marketing the same as buying and selling? No, it's supposed to be a single choice question, not really multiple choice, but that's fine. Is marketing the same as buying and selling? Second question. No, no, no you're, you just respond to the poll. You can respond to the poll. Pick an answer and submit. And then the second question, is marketing the same as advertising? So you pick and submit your answer. Are you guys able to see the poll? Yes, I answered mine already. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We have uh, okay. 16 people have answered so oh, far. Great. So let's present, let's see the results of the poll, Jen. Not me. Sh should, should, should we end the poll now? Yeah, you can end the poll. Let's see the result of the poll. Professor King. No, Professor, I can't see it on my end. You have to show it. Yeah, yeah. So this is, we've seen the result right now. So this Are is fine. It? Yes. So 75% of um, the respondents said marketing is not the same as buying and selling. 19% um, said it is. 6% said maybe. And then for the second question, is marketing the same as advertising? 44% says yes. 44 no. 19 maybe. So this is fine. This gives me an idea on what you're really thinking of marketing. So I'm very sure that your, your understanding of marketing will be refined just at the end of the module. So let's proceed. Thank you so much for responding to the poll. Yeah, so let's proceed. Julia, because, because of time, uh, maybe okay. just another two, three minutes. Huh? Oh, great, yeah, exactly. So module one, the topic is um, evolution of marketing philosophy. So I'm just gonna take you through the marketing philosophies, like, you know, thinking of marketing, how marketing orientation has started a few years before now, and um, what the world is currently saying about marketing. So we have the production concepts. The production concept is a concept that came into play um, just after World War II. Um, it, it's, the concept holds that so long as you can produce, people are going to buy from you. So people used to think that way before now. And then then came the point where almost everyone was producing, and then we had lots of competition. And then producers got to understand that um, a product, a good product, will sell itself. Now that is a product concept. So irrespective of, of, of where you are, irrespective, you don't really need to do any form of promotion. If you have a good product, it's going to sell itself. That was also the orientation that some producers use, usually had before now. Then came the selling concept. The selling concept held that sellers will use any form of tactic to sell their product. 
And then as people, as consumers got wiser, they began to understand that, oh, they are really the, the engine of businesses. They understood that um, without them, the business will not exist. And producers also got to understand that. So then came the marketing concept itself. So this marketing concept holds that survival of the firm depends on the company satisfying the consumer better than competitors. But now there is a new shift in the understanding of marketing. We have a whole lot of environmental issue, a whole lot of business philosophies coming up. And now consumers are not just concerned about their needs and wants. They are also concerned about the operation of the business, how it affects um, their environment. Then, can, then, then comes the societal marketing concept. So for you to be societal friendly with your business, you should, let, you should not let your business adversely affect the society. And consumers are beginning to appreciate that. So there is a case study here, Lucky Star Global. If you click on it, I'm going to share this notes to the class so that you can learn more about Lucky Star Global. And then um, you'll see how their business had evolved over the year through the production concept down to the societal marketing concept. So here's a key, thank you for joining the class today. Here's a key concept, this is a key exercise. I'm looking forward to you um, presenting this on, on the Learn Dash, the discussion forum. So using an African context, perhaps the Lucky Star Global case study that we have shared in the notes, um, write a 500 to 1,000 word essay on the topic, marketing is about selling, not selling. And this assignment is due for November 5th, 2020. You're supposed to submit it on Learn Dash. So see you around. We look forward to having this class next time. Ubuntu. That's great. All right. That's great. I think um, everyone can agree this is very interactive. And I think there's a lot already to learn from it. Uh, thank you, Juliet. Um, so, I think uh, Mr. Mercuru is ready, I see. Okay. Uh, I see you talking, but I still don't hear you clearly. Can you try again? Uh, it's still not clear, I think. Are you using a mic or? If we're unable to hear how we can just get some feedback on Juliet's oh, so course. That should be the next. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Then, um, yeah, so I think like uh, Janisha said, uh, sorry, Mr. Maker, we, we still cannot hear you. So maybe what we're going to do is we, we can still reschedule you again uh, for next Saturday. Uh, but what we can do is take the time that we have. We, we've we seen the presentation from Dr. Onuma. We've seen that from Juliet. We've seen the ones of last week. I mean, this is now an interactive form. What are the things we can really take away from all these things? I mean, one of them, for example, is the breakout part that I noticed from Juliet. Yes. Pretty nice. Um, but then I want to leave the floor to every, I mean, for you to make your own contributions. Yeah, Hi, I really like the interactive, the interactive nature. That was, that was kind of nice. <laughs> it keeps the students involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I think about business courses, um, they are not the most exciting courses when I think of them. Um, I think Juliet did a really good job of uh, making it very engaging. Um, and that allowed me to be able to take in um, the information that she was presenting. Um, mm -hmm. So I think definitely this, this was a very well done. Um, I'm, I'm learning myself what I should do in my own course to make it a better experience for my students. So very, very well done. I really, I really enjoyed the Thank um, you. Now session. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let's, let's not also forget about the visuals. You know, that's something important. When the eyes see, you know, the brains see even wider, you know, because then you're not only listening, uh, but you see and you can really uh, get linked or in, in touch with what is going on. So I think the use of the, 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 the PowerPoint, it's very powerful and that's what it's meant to do and to show the message in that way. 
I think that's something good that we can even use to summarize a whole bunch of stories by showing things and being able to tell. Okay, more? Thank you. Yeah, well, I'd like to hear some, um, maybe I'm very sure it wasn't perfect. So what were the downside? Yeah, I'd like to learn from that as well. Does anybody want to say uh, some, something before, before I jump in, please? Okay, let me go ahead and say something while people are thinking about um, what to say, uh, say, say to you. I think it was excellent. Um, we did a fine job. Um, number one, you actually provided way more to the students. Not only to, did, you, did you say, I'm, I'm teaching marketing, but you immediately connected how this marketing could help them outside of the classroom, and that is for them to be able to take what they're learning and participate in Lion Sroa in a competition. I think that is a powerful element. It shows that you, it was very thoughtful. You actually have the students in mind at heart, thinking about how to connect them to other opportunities. That was well done there. Um, I love the fact that I've always said, even though um, we all teach different courses, it's important that we reinforce the values, the three C's in our courses in, in some shape or form, cooperation, uh, co-prosperity, compassion. And you did that just in a very simple way through that proverb, you did that, right? And I thought it was it's beautiful. It was well done. And it was a good way to, that we get to know each other in a very light manner, but also get to feel like we can extend ourselves to the other person and get to know them in a very lovely manner. It was, it was I enjoyed, I felt a better human being in just in the, in the marketing course. You know? And so, so that was not nicely done. And of course, the visuals was great. And, and me, you leveraged all the tools available to you. You stretched it very well. I mean, we have Zoom here. We're able to say, do a poll, and it doesn't take, take much. Just one or two questions, that's all you need. And you, you did the polling thing, you did the breakout thing. I mean, it was just well done. So thank oh. you for, for inspiring me uh, as well. Thank you. I have a question about the poll. Is that something you will actually do? Is it like a live poll in your course? Or is it something your students will take at their own time and then you analyze the um, responses later. How How is that actually in your course itself? Okay, yeah. For, for, for the poll, it was um, a live poll. If you're hosting the meeting, I asked Jen to help me create it because I'm not the host of this meeting. But for my course, I'm going to be the host, so I'll create the poll myself. Now, what that poll um, does is that it gives you an idea of the background of your students so that you can know um, if to really break down some more concepts, being that, oh, maybe they may not really have so much idea about it, or um, if you can just, you know, overlook some very simple things. So the poll just, the poll gives you information on the student you're talking to. It gives you information about your students. So it's something I can use later for my own personal use, but it's, it's just to know the students, it's just to know their background. And, and it was a very good one. Someone who's taught marketing too before, People often con uh, misconstrue marketing as advertising yeah. or as promotion. So I, I love that the fact that you, you were able to tease that out immediately. So at the end of the course, mm -hmm. they will learn marketing is yeah. more than it's just advertising. More than that, yes, right. exactly. Very good. I think it was well, it was well, well done. Mm, thank you. Uh, then, sorry, let me quickly add this. Uh, I think it would be more better to to organize the poll earlier earlier before your class. I don't know if you get my point. Like it will actually help you to track your what, what you are going to be teaching them, because if you arrange the poll like the same day when you are taking the course, you might not really have uh, much time to maneuver whatever you want to teach them. I don't know if you agree with us. Yeah, I get your point. Actually, that's very true. Um, this was because it's a demonstration already. The main thing. The main thing I had prepared for my course was actually a feedback form, like a Google form. That's actually what is in my course. So the students are supposed to respond. This kind of question is in the form. So they are supposed to respond to me before the class. And then I'll look at that. But because I, can, I don't have the luxury of time to give everyone a link to go to Google form, 
and feel that I just had to use a pool just to give you an idea that I had to understand my students. I had to, I had to know the background before I teach here. Yeah. But let me also come in. I think also there are different kinds of polling. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the way you use the poll here is 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 excellent. I mean, you can you, you use the poll here as a, a tool for engagement. It's appropriate. So, like I said, just one or two. I mean, if you were to do like for anything more than five, it would be too much. So okay. I agree with um, uh, Adedayo. If it's more than five, it would be too much. That would be, you should do that before. But I think the way you did it, just one or two questions as a way to engage. It's just like asking your students to answer your question in a, in a exactly. class. Exactly. So some students, I mean, you know, Amarachi has taught us how to bring in different ways of learning. So some students may be shy to, 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 to voice their answer. Mm -hmm. Well, they will be able to actually key in and say, just respond, right? So, so I think it was just, I think I encourage this. You can use one or two questions during an interactive session like this. Is well done, but yes, to uh, to uh, um, Adelio's point, you can do a more extensive polling before class to get to know them, and then you can use that to sort of track uh, how they are learning. So just thought I should add that. Okay. Yeah, I, I think uh, I agree with you, Prof. I agree with you, Adelio. I think uh, based on my experience here, I've attended virtual classes uh, a lot where the polls have been used and to get people's attention and also the breakout as well to get people's involvement in things and for a normal feedback thing you can use a more long-term time consuming approach which also works in that sense um i mean this is a very good thing and i think gradually we're beginning to see the benefits of you know trying to have this workshop and I really would like to encourage it. I really would like to, you know, talk to the other malamites, please. I mean, take one or two things. Um, although we always say you don't have to copy exact, but to be honest, there's also the saying that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I would rather copy exact than reinvent the wheel in a situation where it helps me better. So you spend very less effort. You just take an idea, you put it into your own way and you just go and it gives you all the benefit of that idea without you really spending that effort that's one of the main goal of having this in, uh, uh, workshop so you learn from each other you see what you miss and you ask yourself how do i take this and how do i put it in and this is something we will be learning over time and by the way um if there may be people who have presented already in this workshop doesn't mean it will be a one-time thing uh, because now what we see is like some kind of introduction and things um but we'll look at it in the future also even when everybody gets the opportunities in such a way that people can come back again and also show something else from what they've learned uh, as a way of us developing ourselves you know and or refreshing something that we thought we have known but forgot along the way you know th that could be one thing as well so I don't know if there's still like two, three minutes for just one more question or some or feedback or something, and then I think we can try to close the workshop. Uh, and for Ms. Mekuru, what I will try to do is hopefully I will try to get in touch with you and do the same thing that I did with one of my Malamai, see if I can help in terms of the network or what exactly is going on and hopefully we have a way out there because that's, also, yeah. that's one of the questions i wanted to ask actually yeah so th this is also one of the things uh, that kind of made me trigger this workshop in i mean this topic uh, because we know people will be teaching from different parts of the world and people will be also from different parts of the world if there's one thing we want to get right is the means of making sure that our courses are properly communicated um, one of the things we recommended was doing a kind of um, i mean you can already record your course you know that could be a way of people catching up with the course but also if you i mean when it comes to the live interaction with students I think one of the things we need to really look at is the networking issues. Sometimes they are not our own personal course, but it's still something that we need to think about. 
Lawrence, you had a question that you wanted to ask. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, yeah I'm just wondering if uh, some of the learners are having network issues and they are just dipping in and out, you know, depending on the fluctuation of the of the network. So what do we do in that instance? Uh, I, I believe the question is not for the workshop itself, but maybe how it affects the actual teaching, right, for the course. Yeah. yeah. So that's something we did talk about, that we were trying to look at what other options we might have, apart from people um, using their own network personally. But if it's a problem of uh, that moment in time issue with the network, yeah, sometimes you can't help it. Uh, but if it's a generic problem where something can be done about it, then we can help. Yes, we can look at it. Okay. How are you? Yeah. So, yeah, but, so but, but we're in, sorry, go ahead. Okay, great. So, um, just to respond to Florence's question. Um, that's also something I've talked about and I was going to ask, um, send an email to Syria University to ask. Sometimes um, you can't really, because of time zone issues or network issues on the part of the learners, you can't really um, just do a live session without hitches. Some people may, may have missed your course, not because they deliberately wanted to, maybe they were pushed out by a network, but then in that case, you're not able to unless you have to teach a game, which is not really advisable. So mm -hmm. if we can record the course, I know that Zoom allows recording and after the class, you can save the recording. So you can, do we have, do we have something on, on Lendash where we can save that recorded session? We can yes. save the rec, yeah. We can save the recording there and anyone who missed the class can watch the recording. It's not on Learn Dash. It's it's going to be a separate um, place where you can upload your documents. So I know you had documents as well, and you can upload the recordings, and you would give the link to that to the students in your class to access. Yeah. So we will be unrolling that soon, so that you can set up if you need to, um, like a separate file for your students and that sort of thing. Okay, but yeah, that will be set up before classes are in session. And you would just have to add the link. You could add it on your introductory page so they would have it there. You don't, so it'd just be like a quick thing to add right. on to the course. Yeah, let me, just to sort of clarify what uh, Janisha is saying, I, was, so, so, I wouldn't upload the file itself because you, it, it might be easy for you to upload the file, but it will be difficult for them to download the file, right? Because it's a video file. So it's, it would be best to actually upload the file maybe on YouTube or some other platform and then share the link, which is what Janisha is talking about. In that case, if you just share that link um, on your course page or, or whatever. And you can also, you can re reach out to us and we can help, you can just send the file to us, we can help you upload it on YouTube somewhere. So that's also okay. something to, to think I would, about. Um, I would discourage uploading it on YouTube for two reasons, unless if that course is free. Oh, no, no, you can, no, no, you can upload on YouTube and make it pri uh, private, only exclusive to those who have the, uh, the link. It, would be... it can still be downloaded, trust me. <laughs> sure, I mean, I, I, I do get it. People, I mean, people will break their necks, but I think if, if you make it private, at least you, you limit the access of people who can, except people are, except they are hackers trying to go and find the course. And in that case, they can have at it if, if, if the course is too, is, is too important for them. But, yeah. uh, but, um, if you upload on 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 YouTube on YouTube as an unlisted or private, only people who have the file uh, the the link can can see it. You know, that's that's what I would do. But if you want to upload it on a d different file for them to then download, that's fine too. But just keep in mind that it might be more challenging for them to download if they don't have uh, data. Okay. So I think it, I think I'm gonna send that email much later. Yeah. 
But I think it's also something we uh, can think of, uh, Kalu, as a way of how to give support to the Malamites because I can imagine not everyone knows how to do this. And if you have a kind of backbone support from the university itself, then maybe that helps a lot. Uh, but that's something we need to talk of. Uh, because of time, I would just say, um, yeah, that's one aspect, but what I was really hinting on is the aspect when the connectivity problem is coming up from the instructor's side. So you do not even have the possibility of recording from there, but that's something we can talk about a little bit more later on because of time. So thank you all for your time and um, I wish you all the best and the next week, Saturday, we will continue. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you.